it's not that everyone that dies and is brought resuscitated, brought back to life and so on, or comes back to life, has any memory of real death experiences. Some do. I mean, a terrific number. But not all by any means. It's a bit like going to sleep at night. All sorts of things may have happened to your consciousness while you're asleep. But if you can't remember it, well, you can't remember it. Nothing happened. Do you have a good sleep? Yeah, yeah, fine. I was asleep for, you know, seven hours, eight hours. Oh, I feel a bit miserable this morning. But I'm all right, I'm okay here, yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah, good. <laughs> Do you see, we don't know what happens to you in sleep. Is it that you... Why is sleep so necessary? I mean, would it be just as good if I wasn't sleeping and, and kept consciousness? Or do I need to lose consciousness in the sense of not being conscious of this environment here, what we call sleep? Now, clearly, sometimes I dream because sometimes I can remember dreams or I can remember I've had a dream and bits of it, but there was obviously more, but I can't remember the rest. Well, that sounds as though there's quite a lot goes on that you can't remember. You know, it's not at all clear that nothing goes on when you're asleep. And I mean, unless you have an incredibly peaceful life, I mean, there are some mm, proclaimed avatars that stay awake all night, but always don't sleep. But they're rather few and far between, aren't they? Most of us seem to need to recover in this way, namely sleep oblivion. Oblivion is refer as regards what we can remember of it. We're oblivious to what happened rather than we were oblivious all night. Clearly not oblivious all night because sometimes we seem to dream because we've got bits of memory or very good memories of it. And some of the people that, you know, die and... Uh, I don't know why we call it near-death experience, I suppose, because if a person recovers, we feel they couldn't have been truly dead, so they were nearly dead. No, I think they were dead. I mean, whatever dead means, and uh, they were resuscitated, brought back to life. I mean, possibly by the doctor, or something happened, and, you know, the body recovered. You know, the chap at the morgue saw the body moving and thought, ah, oh, might not be dead at the minute. <laughs> May have been dead, but he doesn't look dead now. He just moved his eyelashes. <laughs> oh, we've made a mistake. Hang on a minute. Don't embalm him yet. <laughs> Let's check this out. Now, look, we, we, we don't have it all lovely here, do we? I mean, we, we have bad days. You might have bad dreams. Some people clearly have bad dreams. They get certain recurring bad dreams that they just can't seem to avoid. It's very difficult. I don't know, but perhaps hypnosis might help, or um, a cheaper and easier solution might be um, read good scripture before you go to bed. Not the book of Revelation, right? <laughs> Stick with something like the Gospels, okay? Don't linger too long on the crucifixion. Yes. That's just occurred to me at various points in life. Goodness, you don't know what goes on with them. I have the most terrible time. Every time I go to bed, I think, oh no, not this again, you know, I'm in it. And I wake up and it was too horrific to even remember it. I mean, goodness, that'd be bad, wouldn't it? But of course, you wouldn't know if you don't remember it. Although you might have some sort of residual thing that you don't wake up entirely joyful and happy, you know. And the way some people wake up in the morning it looks like they have horrendous nights. <laughs> no, I'm teasing now, aren't I? <laughs> but you know what I mean. <laughs> Thank you, Dad. When you go to sleep at night, do you go through some heavenly experience where you're monitoring your progress of this contract you've got here? <laughs> Working it out. And 
If so, to what point, if I can't remember? The analysis and advice for the progress. That doesn't seem to fit, Marshall. Hmm. What is replenished when you go to sleep? You're tired. Oh, had a heavy day. So good to lay down. Whoosh. I go off to sleep just like that. You know, my partner, my wife, rather, whatever. And my kids just amazed how quick I just go off to sleep. Just like that. And they just, oh, he's gone to sleep. Can't talk to him anymore. <laughs> no point, he's gone. Do you see? And then when you wake up, you're no longer tired. Well, hopefully. Some people wake up tired occasionally, but you know, that's not good, is it? You've recovered. What's recovered? Well, the body perhaps has rebuilt tissue that needed to be replaced and so on, and there's a general sort of sprinkling and sort outs going on. The body's been very busy during the night, even if you haven't been. But what's happened to the spirit? Is that also rejuvenated, re replenished? Might not be in a in heavenly council, but it could be in some uh, heavenly therapy that helps you recover from the trauma of the day, which it can be for people, all of us at some time, of course. We don't know, do we? We suspect that if you're only getting a few hours sleep each night, that's not a good sign. You should, oh, you get seven, at least seven hours, eight hours would be a good idea. Or oh, it's only a kitty, or oh, you should have a bit more than that. Perhaps you should have nine, ten hours, you know. We've got some notion that it's very necessary, this resting. Whereas, of course, if you're tired and you're walking, you'd stop for quarter of an hour's break and you get up again, oh, you're refreshed, you're, oh, you know, this is why you give your workers breaks. If you work them from dawn to dusk, they may just fade on you in the afternoon and you get nothing out of them at all, you know what I mean? It's, it's not just um, altruism and kindness. If I don't give them breaks, I actually get less out of them, not more. <laughs> The sort of reasoning of the taskmaster, you know. <laughs> hmm. Of course, if they're absolutely loving what they're doing, I mean, the last thing they want is a break. I'm busy and I'm doing it and I'm enjoying it, you know. I mean, you don't, in the extreme, make love and say, excuse me, can I just have a break for a quarter now? <laughs> I need a rest. We'll carry on in a minute, you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> Your tea or coffee, what would you like? <laughs> yeah, break time and resting and sleep. Um, oh, to recover from well, something that's deteriorated, that's been a bit heavy and you're a bit exhausted, you're a bit tired, you need a rest, you need sleep, you need to recover. But I don't normally need much more than half an hour to recover, possibly a ten minute break. And you're saying I need eight hours of complete oblivion. I don't think so. No, I have found that f five hours is absolutely plenty for me. Um, I can sleep more if I just lay there and keep turn over and I go to sleep again. But as often as not, I wouldn't. I would just stay awake and uh, be thinking of something and I'd do the recording or I'd, whatever. I think some people might get up and read a book. I don't know. 
it's not that I'm restless, it's that I'm very happy to be awake again and I want to get on with living. Um, so I, I use the tongue because middle of the night, I mean, you know, I, I don't necessarily, typically don't get out of bed, I just stay there. Listen to some recordings of mine and uh, create some new ones. And I'm happy, I'm so fulfilled by it, I'm so happy about doing it and having done it. Um, I might just think, because I've been laying, you know, on the back too long, uh, oh, I think I'll have a rest now, and I'll turn over and, oh no, I want to say something else, don't I? And I'm back on again, and this will happen so many times, and eventually I'll turn over, and this time he goes off to sleep for another hour, hour and a half, and then it's, you know, daylight or something, you know, getting near to getting up, so he listens to or does something else, and then gets up. Totally rested, happy into the new day, happy too in that I've, I've spent the time so, so well. Best thing I could have been doing. Thank you, Dad. Now this in part could be then because of age, we have need less sleep as we get older. Huh? Partly because we're not necessarily working an eight-hour day, etc. And perhaps also because you become more in harmony, more spiritual. I mean, people ask me, what, what do you do with your days? And I can't tell them because it won't make sense to them. But I spend my days spiritually doing what I think is priority spiritually. It might be reading scripture, studying it, it might be reading an inspirational book, it might be exercises, meditation. A great chunk of it is going to be, has been in recent years. Um, recording what I think is potentially helpful to others. There's an option there, not something to be rammed down their throat, but there if they find it a blessing, and to be avoided if they don't. <laughs> that's okay. I understand that's okay. It's not going to speak to everybody by any means. Although I do certainly have in mind that it would be good if I can reach more people. Because of course I want to bless them, don't I? Yes. We're sent. I could go to heaven yesterday, I don't need to be here. As far as I know, God has a rather more um, demanding opinion, I think, and he may well be keeping me here because there's all sorts of things Marshall needs to polish up. <laughs> and I try to be sensitive to what those things might be, of course. That is our joy, isn't it? So we're not just sent. We're still being taught, aren't we? If we don't need any more teaching, why would God leave us here? He doesn't need us to be sent. He's only sending us because it's the blessing that we need as he understands it. And that's what counts, isn't it? <laughs> well, not entirely, Marshall, no. It's not that I insisted you come here. You understood it was best for you to come. That's why you came. Ah. Oh. Thank you, Dad. Love you. Thank you, Dad.